Okay, so this is Lang Extract. It's a new open source project from Google that helps you convert your unstructured data into structured data. And the part that I really like about this is you can define custom schema, which means you extract the information you're looking for. And also, it also has this very nice visualization of the extracted information. It's an open source project available on GitHub. I'm going to show you how you can use this for not only entity extraction, but also finding their relationships. And hence, you can create custom knowledge graphs that you can subsequently use for something like RAG. So first, let me show you what this project does. And then later on, I'll show you different capabilities and we're going to look at some practical examples. So it's an open source Python package which leverages a large language model to extract structured information from unstructured data. As I said, you can provide few short examples along with the schema and it will try to extract that information for you. You can use it with both proprietary models like Gemini or open source models as well. I haven't tested on open source models, so I'll show you only examples from Gemini. But you want a long context LLM for this to work. Okay, so first we need to install the package using pip and the usage is dead simple. So here's the text that you want to use for information extraction. Make sure if you're going to be using it with RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation, provide the full document. You don't want to do entity extraction on chunk basis, but you want to do it initially on document level and then connect that metadata to chunk level. So first we will need to set up some high quality examples. This will tell Lang Extract what exactly we need. So you provide an example text. After that, you identify which attributes or entities you want to extract from the, this text. Then for within the text, you provide examples. If there are any attributes of this entity, you can also provide those. Now these attributes becomes very helpful when we want to do a relationship extraction between different entities. I'll show you a concrete example later in the video. So we set this up and we provide our input text and just run that through Lang Extract using the prompt that we provided along with the few short examples. Okay, it's way easy to set up, but a quick connection. So this is actually the prompt that is going to drive the extraction. Okay, and the actual input is here. And after that extraction, you can visualize everything within a pretty nice HTML document that is generated for you. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through a few quick examples to showcase different capabilities of Lang Extract. And if you're interested, let me know. I'll create a more detailed video on how you can use Lang Extract with a retrieval augmented generation system. So first we need to install and import all the different packages that we will need. Now here is a basic example. So we have this text related to Apple and we want to extract certain information from it. So the prompt is extract companies, people, products, dates, location, and prices. Now example in this case going to be related to Microsoft. You want to provide a very high quality example or a set of examples which are going to be used as a basis for extraction information from here. So in this example, we just define different entities. So for example, company, person, title. And based on the text example that we have provided here, we provide concrete information from here. Okay, so this is going to ex be used as few short examples. You can have multiple examples. It doesn't have to be a single example. Then all we need to do is when we create the extract or when we call the extract function on Lang Extract, we provide our input text, the prompt that we want to use, along with the examples that we generated and the model that you want to use. Okay, and then it's going to run the entity extraction process. If you want to visualize it, it's going to create this JSON L file. So you can load that JSON L file by calling the visualization function and it will create an HTML file for you. So first let me show you how you run this. So we're going to use Python and then I think it's example underscore basic. So when you run this, you're going to see output like this. 
So it created one chunk and here's the extracted information exactly in the same format that we wanted. It also gives you the character boundaries, which is pretty neat. Okay. And again, if you want to run this for structured output, you want to do it at document level. Do not do this at chunk level. And it generates an HTML file. So here is an example. You can pass through it. You're going to see all the entities that it has extracted along with their attributes. For this basic example, we did not have any attributes, but you can see the different entities that it has identified. And again, a single text can have multiple different entities, not just a single entity for a single type. Okay, now let me show you a more concrete example in which we are not only going to extract entities, but also their attributes. So here is a quarterly earning. This is made up data. Our prompt is going to extract specific information from that quarterly earning. Now, in this case, our example prompt is data cops related. We are going to go into two levels. So we have the extraction class, which is basically the entity and then the corresponding attribute. So for example, a ticker and exchange are the attributes of the company name. Financial metrics have period, value, and change as attributes, okay? This is just one example. Here's another example of a news article. And in this case, we want to extract funding events, competitive move, and then for each one of them, we have the corresponding attributes as well. Here is another example for customer reviews. Okay, so let's say if you are working with customer reviews, then you can set an example like this where you provide example text and what exactly you want to extract as a structured output. Okay, but I think the main power is entity extraction and then figuring out their relationships, which will help you create knowledge graphs or relationship graphs. So let me show you a quick example of how you do that. So let's say here's a medication example. So this is related to dosage of a certain medication by a patient. We want to extract medication related information. This is going to contain dosage, route, medication, frequency, and duration. So this is what we have seen so far. It will be able to extract that information. But let's look at an example in which we are going to look at the relationship between condition and different medications. So let's say we have this clinical note which summarizes the patient information along with what the problems they're facing and what type of medication we are administrating. And the prompt is for each medication, identify the medication name and dosage, medication condition it treats, any re related medication and interaction. Here is the few shot example information. We extract the patient information uh, along with their age and gender as attributes, but then we extract the conditions. So this is the condition for this specific patient. Then for each medication, we extract the name, dosage, and corresponding attributes. One attribute that you're going to notice is this related condition, which ties it back to the condition entity, okay? So now there are two different medications related to this specific condition. But in the actual clinical note, I think there are three different medications with three different conditions related to each other, okay? So we provide this example, one extra parameter you are going to see here is extraction phases or process. This basically tells the LLM how many times to process this information. If you increase the number of passes, the accuracy of extraction increases. However, it's going to be calling the API endpoint multiple times. So at the end, we collect all of these entities and their attributes and put them again in a JSON L file and let me show you the visualization that you get. Okay, so this is the clinical note. Now for every class, you're going to see different attributes. For example, this is the patient information. So we have the age and gender. And then when it goes to the medication, you're going to see the dosage information along with the related condition. 
okay? So this is extremely helpful because now there is a direct relationship between the condition and medication. And as I said, you can create knowledge graphs based on that. So let me show you a quick example of using this data that was extracted using Lang Extract for creation of a knowledge graph. So here is exactly how it looks like. There are, I think, three different conditions that were, or actually four different conditions that were mentioned. So one is hypertension, hyperlipidemia, arterial fibrillation, and this is, I think, type 2 diabetes, okay? So the corresponding medication for each of these conditions seems like this specific condition has two different medications connected to it. So this kind of shows you the relationship of medications plus the conditions it's treating. And all of this is done through the name entity recognition along with their relationship extraction. In the official GitHub repo, there are quite a few examples. One of them is LLM accelerates annotation for medical information. So the example that I showed you is based off of some examples that are discussed in this paper. And as I said, the knowledge graphs that you create using this structured information extraction can be extremely helpful for downstream retrieval augmented generation systems. So let me know if you are interested in learning more about how to leverage this structured information extraction for RAG. One more thing before I go, this is not officially supported Google product, but it's an open source project from some Googlers. Now, and this is not the only open source project out there that can help you structure information extraction from unstructured data. There are quite a few other approaches as well, but I'll highly recommend if you are working on any information retrieval system to look at structured uh, data extraction specifically for metadata usage. Anyways, I hope you found this video useful. Thanks for watching, and as always, see you in the next one.